Hi. I feel like we are on TV, you know, when the director would say, OK, one, two, three, go. <laughs> well, thank you very much for coming and, uh, and supporting me, supporting me too on, on this one, uh, especially, specifically my friend, Dr. Sherry, Sher uh, Dr. Sherry Ludwig, who came all the way from Denver to, to be present in this presentation. But uh, what I'm going to share with you tonight is something that is really very dear to my heart. Um, it is something that probably I'm going to focus on in terms of academic research. And uh, this is something that I feel that is needed for now, and especially for a Hispanic serving institution like Adams State. Uh, what I'm going to do within this hour would be to summarize and share with you some of the literature that comes, that, that, that's around, some of the literature that has been published regarding the persistence and retention of Hispanic students in STEM fields. STEM, uh, STEM, S-T-E-M, uh, stands for science, technology, engineering, and math. So the fields that, the, 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 the research that I have uh, compiled and be sharing with you only deals with Hispanic students that are in the STEM disciplines, enrolled in STEM fields. And how I'm going to do this would be to, first I would, give, uh, I, would give, I would present to you some of the statistics about the demographics of Hispanics in the United States, um, some statistics and facts about the number of students who are in STEM fields, and then the, the, the presentation is actually focused on the factors, different factors that accounts for persistence and retention in the STEM disciplines and then some recommendations at the end of the, of the presentation. So let's look at demographics. Um, it, it, uh, in, uh, the, in, in 2013, the number or the pop population of Hisp the Hispanic population in the United States totals, totals about 54.1 million. Um, we, and that accounts for about 17% of the U.S. population. And the, the, the U.S. Bureau of Census says that there was a 50% growth between years 2000 and 2012. So within a span of about 12 years, the, the, number, of, uh, the number of Hispanics in the country doubled. And it was predicted that by 2050, the, the percentage of Hispanics in the United States will probably be about 30%. So that's the, the, the Hispanic population is, is one of the largest, the largest population group that's expanding so much and that's multiplying so much except for um, Asian, Asian Americans. But in terms of academic achievement, when we talk of academic achievement, the statistic shows that for Hispanics age 25 and above, there's only about 33.5% of the student population that age who have completed uh, high school. And that is in comparison with about 6.9% non-completion in high school of non-Hispanic whites. And for the high school students who finally get into college or go, 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 go uh, graduate from high school, about 47% of these students don't go into four-year institutions, but what they do is they go into community colleges or two-year two -year institutions. Okay. Now, when we are talking of STEM fields, the reason why STEM now is really the inward, as they say, is because in the next decade or so, the areas of greatest employment opportunity will be for careers in STEM. That will be the greatest, that a lot of, a lot of uh, opportunities and a lot of careers out there will be on STEM-related uh, STEM disciplines. 
And we're not only talking of greatest employment opportunity, but also in terms of wages. And we have some statistics to show that. So the employment in STEM jobs between 2010 and 2020, the Cong US Congress, the JEC, uh, actually said that between this time, employments in STEM occupations will increase by 17%. So we have already started 2010, so we are moving on to 2020, and by that time, the number of STEM-related careers will really increase by 17%. The National Science Foundation even has it higher. The National Foundation, who monitors all of the science graduates and who also goes into, into research and, and a lot of opportunities regarding STEM-related STEM disciplines, says that the increase for job opportunities will even be as high as 50, 50%. So the, the, the Congress, uh, the, the Joint Economic, Economic Commission of the, of the U.S. Congress says that the U.S. now needs about one million more STEM professionals. Right now, we need about one million more. And so therefore, we need to increase the number of students that we are graduating with STEM degrees by about 35% over the current, the current rate. Here's, uh, here in terms of the projected percentage increases in STEM jobs, 62% um, over there, that's not very, very clear, but that's biomedical and in the engineering fields. Biomedical and engineering fields will, 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 will account for about 62% of the jobs that are needed in the, next, uh, in the next two decades or so. Medical careers is next, which is 36%. System software development, it's about 32%. Computer systems analysts, about 22%. And mathematicians or mathematics, careers in mathematics, of about 16%. All other occupations will only increase by about 14%. So there you go, those, those are the job opportunities for our students who probably will, we, and we hope, will go into disciplines in, um, in, the STEM, in, the, in, in STEM. In terms of wages, in terms of wages, while all of us probably our annual mean, means, mean wage is only about 47,000 per year, petroleum engineers are, are, are receiving as much as 147,000 a year, petroleum engineers followed by architectural and engineering managers, about 138,000 a year, natural science managers, about 136,000 a year, computer and information systems managers, 136, and physicists for about 117,000 a year. So in terms of wages, when our students, if our students can go into this varied uh, STEM-related disciplines, that's that's what they will get in terms of, of salaries. But what is the problem? The problem is that there's a high demand in, for STEM, for STEM careers, for STEM careers, for STEM, STEM degrees, for STEM professionals. There's a very high demand in that. But there's not enough students that enroll in STEM-related courses and it's even more prevalent among Hispanic students. So here is some statistics for, uh, for the enrollment in STEM fields between 1996 and 2004. The number of students that went into college to get uh, STEM-related courses increased by 21%. So a lot of students actually enrolled increased by 21% within this time period of 1996-2004 as compared to the increase in enrollment to non-STEM non related courses, only about 11%. But, and Hispanic students in, enrolling in STEM fields actually increased. So a lot of our students, even among the Hispanic population, really increased in getting into STEM related courses, degree programs, but at the same time also, 
very low numbers of students really persist in the program. And that's when we start, we have the, we start with a problem because not many of the students will, re will persist and finish their courses or their degrees. Um, this is another thing, 16% of Hispanic students who began college in 2004 as STEM majors completed a degree in 2009. So only 16% who enrolled in degree courses completed. But you compare this with about 25% degree completion rate of non-Hispanic students. So our students, the Hispanic students, don't, don't seem to do very well in terms of completion rate. Here's, the, the, here's another uh, table that mentions the degrees and certificates awarded to all students and Hispanics in STEM by academic level. And you will see that we are actually losing a lot of our students uh, in terms of completion from Let's say if you go to the bachelor, you, the number of the percentage of Hispanic students graduating uh, at 8%, but then when they get to master's level, they're down to 4%, and then at the doctoral degree level, we, we, also, we also lose quite a few. So there's in the pipeline along the, along the, along the, the different academic levels, the fewer and fewer of uh, Hispanic students are completing these degree programs. The most popular fields for Hispanic students appear to be in the social sciences, business, psychology, and education. Very few students go into undergraduate degrees in biological and life sciences, computer and information sciences, engineering, and the health professions. And what more? Studies show that half of all Hispanic students who declare majors in STEM at the beginning of their, at the beginning of their college, uh, college career, and then they change majors? Somewhere in the middle of the second year or in the third year, they change major? The research shows that they do not even earn a degree in either, in either, in either of, the, of the degree programs. So something must, must be, some, I, I'm bothered by that. So what keeps Hispanic students in STEM fields? What are some of the factors that contribute to their persistence and retention in the STEM disciplines? So this is the, this is the gist of, of this presentation and we, uh, the, the research literature used uh, persistence, the definition of persistence as the, the ability of the students to stay in the program, complete, complete, complete the course requirements in a program. While retention is an institutional measure, what, what, do, we, what do we do to address uh, to address the needs of the students in terms of selection process and the uh, learning environment. So we look at persistence. The literature for uh, the framework that explains the factors that will influence the retention of the, pers the, the persistence and retention of college uh, of Hispanic students in STEM, STEM disciplines was taken or was modeled after the black box approach to the college experience by Padilla. He, he says that, Padilla says that students coming into, into the institution actually have already some knowledge, they have behaviors, they have attitudes, they have actions that will influence the way how they will navigate the college experience. The college experience, the social, the social and academic experiences of the college will actually determine how these students will be successful. So the way how the students will navigate the things 
in within, within the college will determine whether they are going to be successful or whether they are going to drop out. And Nora, who is a professor uh, 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 in te at Texas, what she did was she formulated a framework just for college engagement of Hispanic students in the STEM disciplines. And this is what her framework says. Her, fr her framework says that there are, about, there are about five elements. There are about five elements to consider for Hispanic students. And this is what she says. There, there's what she calls the pre-college pool factors. She says there's academic and social experiences. There's cognitive and non-cognitive outcomes. There's a sense of purpose and goal determination. The pre-college purpose is actually what the student, uh, the pre-college factors is what will be what the student is bringing in. And all these four, academic, cognitive, sense of purpose, and goal, are all within, within the university or within the college environment. So this is what we are I'm going to share with you. We'll go to each one of these and see how they are actually influencing or affecting the persistence of students to remain in the, in the, in the STEM major. OK, pre-college pre-college or pool factors. What does she mean by this? Well, the Nora's model, Nora's model said this has something to do with pre-college abilities, has something to do with financial, financial assistance, family support, and psychosocial support. So these are the pool factors. These are the factors that the students have within them already as they move into the college environment. In terms of abilities, the greatest factor in the literature says that it is the academic preparedness of the students that is a major factor for success. So the students, how prepared is the student to be able to move into the college courses in the STEM disciplines, which is mostly science, which is mostly mathematics, and how prepared are they? And the literature also says that the, the, the largest predictor for this is the SATs and the ACT scores. And, uh, but this is the problem, because from among our high school students, 2012 high school graduates, the results indicate that for science coursework at the college level, only about 31% of the students actually are competent, have the ability to, to really be successful in science. There's only about 46% are ready for math. And for all the four, English, reading, math, and science, only about 25% of our high school students seems to be are competent enough. They have the ability to be able to be successful in this beginning college courses. And what more, lately this was confirmed for Hispanic students. In a large study uh, conducted by Chang et al. Uh, and, and his colleagues in 2010, he, he, his research confirmed that even for Hispanic students that even becomes a major factor the SATs. And so it seems that our Hispanic students lag behind non-Hispanic non students in SATs and ACT scores. So that alone, from the beginning factor, we, they, they are already at a disadvantage. Uh, even, if they, even if they probably can qualify, the research indicate that they will probably struggle as they move on to higher level science and math courses. So, that, that, uh, so, so that's the first one. The second one is family support system. And that is, that, that, that's all across the board we are seeing, we are saying that family is very important. 
And for Hispanic students, that's even, that's even, uh, that, that, that is very, very much important. For our camp students here, many of them have families just nearby. And I think that is one of the reasons why our retention, our retention for our camp students this year is very high. There were only two, two students out of 30 dropped out. And only because they were homesick and their parents were very far away. So they left. But the family support is, but family support is very important. But for STEM students, for STEM students, what the literature is saying is that if in the family you have one member of the family, like one of the parents or, or some, some of the uncles and aunts, if one of those are, are actually working in a, in a STEM, in a STEM-related field, or if, uh, if, if some of them are, are working as engineers, working as, as, as nurses, it, it seems as if that is a very, very important uh, predictor for these students. They, most, of the, most of the children, most of the students will persist in STEM-related courses. I think it's because of the role model that they see, or it's probable that you know, when they get home, they can talk to their, to their fathers or to their uncles about, about, the, about the discipline itself. And for the Hispanic late, uh, women, the Latinas, if the father or one member of the family is in a STEM-related field, it seems as if there is more direction for Hispanic Latinas to go into something that they would really want to with the guidance and support of this family member. So that, that for me, that is something that we have to, we have to pay attention to. So the financial resources comes in as a major problem, but for our Hispanic, students, they worry much about the debt. STEM, STEM disciplines take a little bit longer, isn't it, Chris? It's a little bit longer, I mean, four years or five years, you know. Instead of graduating in four, in many instances, they graduate in five, five years. So it's longer, longer term. And for many of the Hispanic students, they're worried about the debt. So many of them would, would change or they would, they would not go into STEM-related courses because they feel that you know, they could get other careers that will take them only into the four-year limit. So financial, res financial concerns, family responsibilities, and work commitments appears to be very true for our Hispanic students in STEM. Now, um, so, we talked about the academic and social experiences. Now we are going to go into the, the next. The academic and social experiences and what are some of these things that we are talking about? What are these things in the academic and social experiences? The experiences that the students would have once they get into when I was doing this paper, I was thinking of, of Adam State. And I said, okay, the students are coming in from all of the high schools around the valley, and then they are coming into here. So what they will experience within this time inside the university or within the campus will actually, will actually be experiences that are linked to, they feel, they're, they are linked to the interaction between the student and faculty. That's one of the things that they have in mind. Second, they like to see whether our environment is a supportive environment. And third, oh, and the third here, and this perception of a very supportive environment and a very caring faculty, faculty that really understands them, are two of the most important factors that Hispanic students feel that they need to have, and this is very strong for even for those students who have very low SATs. So 
what are these academic and social experiences? The research shows for, his, for, for Hispanic students in STEM, number one factor appears to be being an intern or being a research assistant to a research project, being able to work with a professor, being able to do research with a professor. What, what does this do? with, with, with uh, Hispanic students. With, it validates, it validates their perception that, oh, wow, I'm good. I am good, Theref therefore, I can, I can do this. So it validates their perceptions of their ability, of their ability. At the same time, they learn about the discipline, they learn about the profession, they learn about the many, many areas that they can go into by just talking and having an interaction with the professor of the project. This appears to be number one in terms of that academic and uh, academic experience that Hispanic students would like to have, would like to experience when they are in. Uh, another, another reason why, why this is very important to them is because they gain research skills and they build that social capital. I remember when I went to Purdue, and I was in the sciences. Uh, coming from the Philippines, who is a very underdeveloped country, you know, and I am in a rural, rural area, and no, no experience of big cities. Suddenly, I was at Purdue, 45,000 students, only a number, only a number in terms of, the, of, of students, but I had the opportunity to be a research assistant to a genetics professor. And that alone, you know, I got so interested in genetics, even if I lost the flies in winter. <laughs> I was doing some research for the professor, and we had this uh, Drosophila melagonaster, and I was doing, having it in vials like this, but, but I slipped on the snow. And I, the, the vials fell. And I had to stay another semester just to do the research. But it was a wonderful experience. <laughs> and I was just telling Karen, I said, you know, probably if I did not get that experience, perhaps I would have gone back to the Philippines and said, no more, no more. I'm done. I, it's very difficult. The, the courses are very difficult. Biochemistry, microbiology, oh, I, don't, I can't handle it. But I had very good professors. And that research assistantship was something that I will really treasure because I learned so many things. And that seems to be what is in the literature. Number one for Hispanic students in STEM disciplines is assistantships in, in research. Student involvement, to be successful, our Hispanic students need to have high involvement. Involvement in what? They need to spend energy in terms of the amount of time they spend in assignments, the amount of time that they have to read, and the amount of time that they have to do projects. If they don't have those attitudes and those skills, Bella, right, they won't be able to get into the STEM fields, OK? But this is a key ingredient to persistence, a key in ingredient for our Hispanic students to remain in the STEM. They must be able to spend vast amounts of energy academically, physically, and psychologically. And that is important for the environment for Adam State, too. They have to pay attention to the physical well-being, and that's what we are doing, physical well-being, psychological well-being uh, of, our, of our students. The third factor is joining active participation in student organizations. Well, that we understand. We know that for a fact that even we probably, when we were having our, when we were an, uh, uh, in, our, in our undergraduate and graduate programs, it's very important that we join clubs because that's where we develop a sense of belonging, a sense, a sense of 
a sense of belonging that, hey, I belong, I belong to the group. And, and, and if, ever, if ever I would like to, if I would like to do some things, I have a group or I have, a, or, I have an organization that I can go with. And that's what camp, camp uh, the camp uh, program is doing for our students now. They have, they have a lot of this, they, they go to Santa Fe together, they go to, they go to Chicago together, they have team building activities. So joining, joining organization and clubs, very important for our Hispanic, Hispanic students. Number four is interaction. And it's not only a matter of interaction, it's frequent. Our Hispanic students need frequent interaction with students and faculty. Now you know what research says. Research says that students don't come to us. Even if you say, even if you say, you know, these are my office hours, unless we really ask them, you, you come, you come at this time. Uh, I want to talk to you at this time. So Hispanic students even need, need, uh, need that more than others. And the frequent interaction with students, frequent interactions with faculty especially, for many of our Hispanic students can lead to further, can lead to further opportunities such as graduate school. And so students who are academically and socially involved usually will persist in the STEM, in, in STEM courses. Related to that is exposure to academi academically related activities. When I worked with my professor, when I was the teaching assistant uh, with my genetics professor, he brought me to conferences. He brought me to, to, um, to seminars. Being exposed to those things actually helped me a lot because I was able, I was able to, to develop what we would call social networks, professional networks, academic networks. I got to meet friends that, that came from China, friends that came from Singapore, and then we only found out that we have the same, we just won't work. We work across the hall and we never see each other. But when we are in seminars and, and conferences, we usually see each other. So students love this and they will persist. They will stay in the program if we only get them to, uh, get them to attend these academically related ac conferences and seminars. Sometimes even meetings help. Meetings, they have to be in, uh, uh, they have to, to be an observer. They may not be voting or, or doing anything, but they observers in, being an observer in meetings is enough, getting get these kids to get enough information to be, to be more confident. And the other thing the literature is saying that if we do this to our Hispanic students, it actually counteracts the feeling of isolation, which is true. I'm, I'm a, uh, I, I, I help with the, CASA, with the CASA house activities and getting to get students together. Some of the students are really saying, Hispanic, some of our Hispanic students really say that, oh, you know, I feel that I'm invisible. What do you mean by that? You're invisible. Say, so, well, so they don't care about my being here. You know, who is they? Oh, some faculty. They, 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 See, that, that feeling of isolation and being invisible, if you as a mentor and if you as a faculty member would actually bring these kids into seminars, conferences, make them visible, this counters what they call isolation and invisibility. And studies, the, the, uh, studies different researchers attested to this. Number six, peer mentoring. Peer mentoring and advisement. Um, there must be a, a, a sincere, there must be a sincere interaction of being a peer, of a mentor, being a mentor, being a mentor to the students. And I'm very happy that here at, uh, at Adam State, we are having, 
we, are, we, we have some activities that actually helps faculty to become a good mentor for our students. I think that's a, very, a good step in the right direction because Hispanic students need a lot of mentoring from our, our faculty. But it's not only faculty. They need advice from and support from their peers. They need advice and support from upperclassmen, from graduate students, and teaching assistant. And this bolsters the sense of belonging of our Hispanic students. The level of academic integration is also one of those. So there's like, see this about like seven, seven factors within the university. The level of academic, academic integration uh, says that there must be a development of a very strong affiliation between the student and the institution, between the student and what's happening inside the classroom. A very strong affiliation between, oh, I love this class, and I would like to attend future classes of genetics, future classes of, of microbiology, future classes of math. I love it, and I have students who told me that, oh, math, I love mathematics. And I love all the, all the courses, all the mathematics courses over at Porterall. I love it. A very strong affiliation to the courses. But this is also carried out outside. So when the students are outside, they talk about it. Oh, Nick's, Nick's class is one of the best, you know? Or uh, Christie's class is one of the best. Outside, they talk about it. Students hear it. And they get interested. And you attract more students to get into the discipline. But if you, we often hear students outside of the classroom say, oh, math, hmm, hmm, I don't like it, uh, science, uh. Now, what will that say to the other, to the, to the other uh, students who hears them? So this level of academic integration must actually be very, very strong for our Hispanic students inside the classroom and outside of the classroom. And, and um, the, the academic experience of the students, academic, social experiences, these seven things that I have spoken to you, the seven things, intern, uh, research assistantship, uh, uh, joining, uh, joining clubs and organizations, peer advisory, these seven things, the, the academic experiences in, during first year of the student stay in the university is very, very important. So if we in the university are looking towards Hispanic students going into the STEM fields, we must pay attention to what's happening uh, at the, the developmental courses. We must be involved in, in the first year experience, the first year courses, the first year activities of the students, and see to it that the experiences are positive, and that way they will stay. So that's, the, that's academic and, and social experiences. Let's go, to the, let's go to the sense of purpose and institutional uh, allegiance. Sense of purpose, in here, Again, we see first year academic and social experiences lead to a very strong sense of belonging. But the sense of purpose, the sense of purpose, it seems for this, for our particular Hispanic students, seems to be a divide between full-time students and part-time students. It appears that students who are full-time, no work, they are full-time students, they are, probably, uh, a, they are probably a research assistant in one of the labs of the professors, but they are within the campus. The, it seems as if that those who are on full time, we, the most likelihood for them to succeed is better, much higher than those who work full time. And I can understand that because even, education, even if education is not a STEM-related STEM course, 
I mean, Larissa over here can, can attest to that, that being a, uh, a mother and working at the same time is very, very difficult to navigate between all these factors and be successful in senior block courses. So being a full-time student, you're more likely to com complete a STEM degree as compared to the, to the part-time. Having a goal in mind is very important too. So it, 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 uh, Nora's framework says that goals should actually start, goals and aspirations should actually start to be nurtured from when the kid is still small. So having, having a goal that I want really to become an engineer or I want to become an astronaut just like the Italian, the Italian astronaut that, has, that, that just now, uh, uh, that, <laughs> that's now in space. Right? There's a lady, Italian lady, who is doing espresso up there, testing how to do a, a, a coffee, ex coffee espresso up there, you know, when there's no gravity, Bella. So kids, kids as young as this ones, that's when the aspirations should start. According to some of our students that we, that we, uh, that we interviewed, they, uh, they said, if you really want students to come to Adam State, don't go and talk to the high school students when they are in their senior year. You have got to catch them when they are in first year or second year. So, because that's the time there that they are trying to, they're trying to see whether, you know, they'll go into the social sciences or into STEM fields. S attitudes and perceptions. Many of our students, Hispanic students, feel that they are not, they don't have the competence nor the ability to actually succeed in STEM-related courses. But that's a, that's a perception. We have the advising that we need to do. The interaction with the faculty needs to point out to them that they can be successful. It's only a matter of just, just trying to put some extra effort and being able to say that it's a matter of being able to, uh, a competent competency to acquire the skills to be able to be successful in these STEM related, related courses. Self efficacy is very important because the next slide will say that the probability of choosing engineering or science increases with the student's perception that he or she possesses a solid math background. Why do, you, why do we say that? I mean, that the students have that feeling that, oh, I can't do it. I don't have enough math background. So if we tell them that that's not true, that's not true, all what you need is to exert more effort, spend some more time, be actively involved. You'll be able to understand math. And that's mo many of our students in education. We hear that all the time. Because once the student is confident, it actually influences what he or she will do. The choice of activities, the time to be devoted, uh, to do classwork and the effort that they will make. Everything starts from those perceptions and those self-efficacy uh, thoughts of the, of the students. So, Nora's factor says that this uh, standardized test scores, participation in organizations, undergraduate academic research programs, sense of belonging, self-efficacy, effort, attitudes are the factors that in will influence the persistence of students, Hispanic students in STEM fields from, 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 her, from her framework. And so therefore, we, uh, the research, research have shown that if you increase the standardized test scores of the students by as much as 100, 100 points, the, the, the probability of persisting in a STEM course is about 3.54%, SAT, SAT uh, SATs. For, 
For joining clubs and organizations, the, the probability of staying is about 14.87%. Uh, but look at what is number one, research internships. The probability of getting kids to stay in Hispanic courses goes up, is about 19.51%. So between all those three, I feel that this one, we have to pay attention uh, with, with this one. But then, of course, we also, before, before we do this, they need to get into those uh, gatekeeper courses that we talk about. So what, what are some of the recommendations? So in terms of recommendations, I was thinking of it in terms of what we can do here at Adam State. So let's talk about academic preparedness. We talk about increasing mathematics and science competencies of Hispanic high school students. We talk about that all the time. Support the pre-college academic preparedness of Hispanic students interested in pursuing courses. If we really want to get students into the STEM courses, we pay attention to what we can do to do this. Start from high school, and then when they are with us, what can we do to help them here once they are already here? Uh, next. Uh, academic research. I feel that, that Hispanic uh, serving institutions we should identify potential Hispanic students for research opportunities. Identify them as early as we can. And the institution should support, should support internships, should support peer mentoring programs. The institution have a lot of things to say here. And we should actively recruit talented students. So get out there. Don't go when, that, that's what the students say, don't go when they are in third year or fourth year students, senior year, because they have already made up their mind. If they, if they, uh, they, they know where to go already. But if we catch them early and do something to improve their SAT scores, their achievement and their abilities to do math and science courses, reading and, uh, reading and, uh, and writing as well, then we will be able to get uh, talented students who will go into research. Family support, well, we have to find ways to coordinate with K-12 levels to engage, engage Hispanic families to really understand math, math STEM-related courses. They have to understand what it entails. They have to understand what are some of the things that they need to support. They may not support them with, uh, like, I, don't, I can't teach you calculus because I don't know calculus, but there are other ways the families can, can support. Another recommendation should be the department should be encouraged to support student-run organizations, both, both financially and administrative, administratively. And the, lit the literature also says that as much as possible, faculty should actually be the advisor of these organizations. And faculty mentoring, we need, to we need to strengthen and encourage the confidence of the students to navigate, to navigate all the things that are within the institution for them to be successful. Pay attention to students' self-efficacy. And then listen to students' bicultural competence and coping skills. These were some of the suggestions by this author, how to, how to do faculty mentoring. And the sense of belonging, uh, we need to do a lot more in terms of um, how to do our orientation programs. Uh, we'll have to establish peer academic communities for pre-majors and existing majors, establishing mentoring programs, and the academic advising must really be continuous. Future research. The literature for Hispanic students in STEM disciplines is not that many. It's a new field. It's a new field that's coming up. 
and we're ve I, I, uh, Nora, Nora's framework is, ve is a very good framework to start with. Future research has to, has to be done, especially on, on the factors that will facilitate the completion of the degrees, and then examine why students are dropping from gate, what's, what we call gatekeeper courses. The gatekeeper courses are actually the beginning courses in science and, and science in math. So there are a lot of students who are withdrawing like after, after, one, after the first year, they withdraw. So research, research uh, is needed in that one. Um, just, uh, just to let you know that the Obama administration actually has allocated lots and lots of funds for STEM-related programs. The, the, the government has a goal, the government has a plan, and the government has actually increased the allocation for the first two years now of funding that will go to STEM-related projects. So that's probably what we need to do if we want to look at those recommendations that were given. Thank you very much.